The speed editor is one of those tools that I couldn't edit without now, and I wouldn't want to either. It has drastically sped up the way that I edit, especially when working on things like podcasts or multicam shoots that I've recorded using my ATEM ISO. And I always get people asking me, shall I get a speed editor? Are they worth it? So today I'm going to show you my top five features of the speed editor for editing an ATEM ISO Resolve project. A quick overview of the speed editor then for those that are new to it. It's a dedicated control surface with all of the key buttons and dials you need for speeding up your edit. It works in DaVinci Resolve 17 and above and connects via USB-C or Bluetooth thanks to its 10 hour built in battery life. Now it really is designed to be used in the cut page of DaVinci Resolve and in my opinion that is where it works best as you'll see from this video hopefully. But recent software updates have allowed it to work in the edit page too if that is more your thing. Now, of course, you can use the speed editor for any type of edit, but what I'm going to concentrate on in this video is its top five features when using it with an ATEM ISO project in Resolve, starting with feature number one, the search dial. This is so useful. I genuinely think I'd buy a miniature version of the speed editor that just had the search dial for when I was editing whilst traveling because I use this feature all the time consistently. Now, the search dial or jog wheel allows you to navigate through your timeline or source media much faster and much more precisely than if you were just using a mouse and keyboard. It has three modes of speed. Uh, the two I use the most are jog and scroll. And what they allow you to do, if we, if we start with jog, for example, it will just allow you to, as you turn the jog wheel or the scroll wheel, you'll be able to just navigate through the, the timeline at a consistent speed here. And if we need to go faster, that is where we use scroll to kind of go through the whole timeline. So even though I'm only turning the, the wheel a little bit, you can see I'm going at a much faster pace. So it allows you to you know, jump to areas of the, the edit really quickly, then get go back into jog mode and get more granular between the cuts, for example. Now, this isn't just for navigating through the timeline. I can do exactly the same through source footage. So if I hit the source button here, we can then jog through the source footage or scroll through it at a faster pace here. And you'll notice as I switch between scroll and jog, it's also changing the waveform. So when I'm in jog mode, I've got much more granular view of the audio waveforms in that preview window as well. And also we can use this in the sync bin. So as we're going through our timeline and I'm scrolling through, we can actually see here all six cameras now. And we've got a nice view of what all of our cameras were doing. And also we've got that indicator up at, uh, as to what camera is live, the red box around the camera as we scroll through. So it's a really, the, the, the search dial, the jog wheel, whatever you want to call it, is a really quick and easy way of navigating through both your source media and your timeline as well. Now I did mention there's actually three modes of speed. I've only talked about jog and scroll. There's also shuttle as well. I don't tend to personally use that as much, but if we go into that mode, I'll show you what it does. So as you turn the uh, search dial to the right, you can see it will start playing back the footage at a set speed. And as, if I let go, it will stay at that constant speed. If I continue turning even a bit more, there we go, we've gone a bit faster, 20 times now, uh, and equally, if I do it over to the left, it will do the exact same, but in reverse. So again, it just allows you to navigate through the timeline in a different way. And uh, I believe that goes all the way up to, let's see how fast we can get it up to 64 times. There we go. So it does mean you can scroll through a timeline quite quickly if you need to. But personally, I like doing that with the scroll fu function because I can get through a whole timeline much faster. On to feature number two, roll. Now you know how the search dial works, you can combine it with one of my favorite buttons on the speed editor, which is the roll button. So let's dive into a project here. And this is perfect for those times where you envision mixing live and maybe you cut to a camera too early or too late after someone has started speaking. You just want to change that edit point between the two cameras. So what we can do is we can take our search dial, we're in jog mode at the moment, and you'll see as we get close to an edit point, there's a little arrow that appears above the timeline and it pulses green if we stop. That means it's a smart indicator and it basically means that any adjustments that we make is going to happen to that edit point. And you'll see if I roll forward to the next edit point, that arrow will jump as we get closer to it. There, there it goes uh, there. So this is a great example here. I basically cut too early. I've cut before my talent here has finished speaking to the wide. So I want to delay that cut. I want to roll it back a little bit. So all we need to do is get near to that edit point so that the arrow is pointing to the edit point. 
and you can see it's pulsing green. And I'm going to hold down the roll button here. And now that's going to put me in roll mode. And what I'm able to do is I'm just able to move the search wheel and roll that edit point back. And the key thing here is that it maintains sync between the two angles, both audio and video sync. So we don't have to worry about that. We're just changing where that cut point is. So let's move it to where he stopped speaking about there. And now if we play it through, there we go. It's cut to the uh, wide angle at the right time. Whereas before when I live vision mixed it, I probably cut a little bit too early. And you can see the reason I love doing this on the, the uh, speed editor is because we have that precision. So what I like to do is I'll watch as I'm editing a podcast, I'll just watch it through. And if I spot any times where I did maybe cut something too late or too early, then I'll just stop, navigate to it, hold down that roll button. And you can see there in the, in the viewer, we've got frame precision so I can move through it frame, frame by frame to really get that cut perfect. And I do this all the time. It's a much quicker way than mouse and keyboard of making small tweaks to those cut points. But what if when you were vision mixing live, you accidentally cut to the wrong camera angle or in the edit, you realize there's a better camera angle you could have used to show something. Well, that's what I'm going to show you how you can change because the speed editor has a built in function only for the speed editor that makes this really simple. It's really cool. Trust me, you're going to want to see it. But before I show you, let's talk cloud storage with the sponsor of today's video, LucidLink. LucidLink is the new way for creative teams to work together on projects in real time without having to download and sync media locally. It's fast, simple, secure, and acts just like a regular hard drive connected to your computer locally, but with all the benefits of a cloud storage solution. Take this footage I've just shot in my studio as an example that I want my remote editor to get Get working on. Traditionally, I'd have to either send them the SSD or wait hours for all 200 gigabytes to upload to something like Google Drive, and they'd have to wait for it all to download at their end before starting on the edit. With LucidLink, they can get started straight away and could even have instant access to the footage as I'm uploading it. There's no wait to download the full file because LucidLink streams only the bits of the file they need as and when it's needed. Let me say that again. You don't have to download your media first just to start working. Instead, play your media in real time directly from the cloud. LucidLink revolutionizes the way you store and access your files, making collaboration simple and allowing you to work seamlessly together from any location in the world as if you were in the same room. No more wasting time with complicated VPN setups or slow file transfers. And because it appears just like a physical hard drive plugged into your computer, it seamlessly works with all your existing apps and tools. With your files being in the cloud, you don't have to worry about running out of storage either. LucidLink is fully scalable and can handle as much data and as many users as you need. Another benefit is that LucidLink provides you with a single source of truth for all of your files. So there's no more confusion about whether you're working with the latest version or if some of your team are working with out of date files and it's secure. It uses military grade encryption for all your data to ensure that the only people that have access to your files are the ones that you grant access to. So say hello to seamless collaboration, real time performance, scalable storage, global access, enhanced security, and a single source of truth for all of your files. Try LucidLink today by clicking the link in the description to get started with your free trial. And let me know in the comments below how you find it. Now, what happens if you want to completely change what camera you cut to? Maybe you made a miscut or you realized in the edit there was a better camera you could have used. This is a great example. So here, if I scroll forward, we're on the single, but actually I've cut to the wide angle. In reality, I probably wanted to cut to my camera one here. So let's do that. Now, if I was using just a mouse and keyboard, the way I would have to do that is go up to my sync bin here where I can see all the cameras. I would probably drag my my playhead to the point where I want to change out the camera. I would set an in point here and then continue dragging maybe to where I'm happy for it to go to the wide. So let's say here and set an out point. Then I would have to go into the camera I want to cut to. So camera one, and then I would have to do a source overwrite here. And then that would be done. So then if we play that back, you can see it now goes to that camera rather than cutting to the wide too early. But if I just delete that, let me show you because the speed editor has a functionality built in only for the speed editor that makes this 10 times faster. And it's like painting what camera you want onto the timeline. It's called live overwrite. So let's go to that edit point again. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my playhead to where I want 
the to to bring in the new camera and i'm going to go into the sync bin here now on the on the uh, speed editor itself there's a live overwrite button so i'm going to press that and i'm also going to turn on video only this is another little tip if you turn on video only, it will only bring the video into the timeline and won't bring the audio. So you won't be doubling up on audio. There is an option for audio only as well if you need that. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold the camera that I want to cut to and then just move my jog wheel for the duration that I want to cut it, cut to that for. I can basically paint on the cameras that I want. So we said we wanted camera one here. So I'm going to hold down camera one and I'm going to just move the jog wheel. And you can see if I let go, that's now on there. And I can do that for all the cameras. So I can hold down camera two here and paint forward. Then I can hold down number three and paint forward. Then number four and paint forward. And it really is as simple as that. I'm basically painting onto the timeline the shots that I want. So if we go back to the actual timeline here and play that back, now we're just working our way through those shots that I had just placed on top. A lot quicker than setting in and out points and all of that jazz. And this is a feature bespoke for the speed editor. So you have to have that, the speed editor to be able to use the live overwrite function. But you can easily see how it makes chopping and changing different shots and camera angles much, much faster than a mouse and keyboard. Number four, transitions. The speed editor makes it really, really simple to add different transitions as you're going through your timeline. So all you need to do is scroll up to an edit point. And again, it's using smart indicators here. So we don't even need to be exactly over the edit point, just near it. And then we can change what the transition between the two points are. So in this case, we've got all cuts throughout this timeline, but let's say we want to add some nice dissolves in here. All I need to do is hit the dissolve button at the bottom left of the speed editor, and that will change that into a dissolve transition. Do the same there. We'll add a few here. And now when we play it through, you can see we've got these nice cross dissolves between the shots. Now, they're a little bit long, I think, in duration. So again, using the speed editor, we can quickly change the duration of those. So if I just hover over one of them and then hold down the trans duration button here, I can make them a bit smaller. And we've got real granular control over the lengths that they are. So we'll tighten them all up. Now, if you want to set a default as you're working your way through so that they're all the same length, what you can do is get one the correct length and put your playhead over the top of it and just double tap trans duration button again. Now, when we go and add a, another cross dissolve, it will be that duration. So we can just add these all the way through. Now there's different uh, types of transitions that you can use on the speed editor itself. We've got cut, dissolve and smooth cut. But a little tip here is if you go to an edit point and hold the trans button up at the top here. If you hold that down, it will give you options for more wacky versions here. So let's go with a diamond iris wipe. And you can see there, if we play that through, there's our lovely diamond. Don't think I'll be using that in any podcast anytime soon though. Finally, feature number five, full view. This is an underused button in my opinion. I like using this all the time, but I never hear people speaking about it. There's one red button on the speed editor and it's labeled full view. And it just does a really simple thing which allows you to make the viewer full screen. So if we click the full view button here, the viewer goes full screen, we can hit play and watch our edit in all of its glory. You can hit the full view button again to get out of full view or when you're in it, you can hit the escape button here to also exit out of it. And a little bonus tip as well, if you double tap full view, it will actually jump ahead a few seconds of where your playhead is. Um, it's called a pre-roll and a po post-roll. So it will play sort of like the first five seconds before where your playhead is. So if we just double tap, even though we're in the wide here, if we just double tap full view, you can see it's actually just skipped ahead about five seconds and plays from there, which can be useful sometimes. So if we exit out of that, I'm just going to finish this video with another little bonus tip, another button I use all the time on my speed editor, which I've already just mentioned it, the escape button. But if you double tap the escape button, it's the same as doing edit undo in any program. So if we just quickly go to a couple of edit points here and add in some dissolves, so we just go through here, we'll do some cross dissolves on all here. And then I decide that actually I don't want those dissolves at all. I can just double tap the escape button and get rid of those really easily. So anything you're doing, 
is a double tap away from being able to undo it. If you found this video useful, please do hit the thumbs up button, like the video, it really does help me algorithm me stuff on YouTube, apparently. Uh, also, if you're new here and you want more tips and tricks, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and then you'll be notified when new videos just like this one drop. And if you have any questions about the video, put them down in the comments below. I read through all of them and we'll try to reply to as many of them as possible. And if you need one-to-one -one help with your setups, maybe it's your studio setups or your editing, editing setups and you need help with your DaVinci workflows, my email address is on screen now. You can ping me an email and we will set up a one-to-one -one consulting session. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.